You come to my rescue. You come to my rescue. I am Lewis Lanham, and I'm happy that you have decided to listen for a brief moment to God's Word. This ministry is designed to spread good news and to encourage those in misery that God still loves them. We all need encouragement from time to time. All of us, even myself, Sometimes we have different crises in our life. When everything seems to fall apart, there are times of discouragement when things go wrong, even when we are trying to do the right thing. At such times, people may even say, that's what you get for trying to do the right thing. You should have listened to me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are times of, of uncertainty when we don't know how things are going to turn out. There are times of stress when our load seems heavier than we can bear. The task seem, seemingly is more than we can handle. Then there are also times of fear when our very sense of security is threatened. And in all of those kinds of situations, we need to be encouraged in the Lord. In the midst of time of great distress, it says of David in our text of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number six, the Bible says, but David strengthen himself in the Lord his God. This will be a series of lessons on this subject, and we pray that these lessons will bless your life. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand that David strengthened himself in the Lord. Now, that sounds really great. But remember, though, David was not perfect. David violated a divine law in Deuteronomy 17 and 17. David was rebuked by the prophet Nathan in 2 Samuel chapter 12. David's deceitfulness in gaining Uriah's wife. But through it all, David knew he needed the Lord. But what does it really mean that David encouraged himself in the Lord? Well, I would like to examine the text and view the background if we can briefly examine uh, this passage to understand David's secret. When it says David strengthened himself, the Hebrew verb implies persistent and continuous effort. There is nothing, nothing passive about seeking out the Lord. In times of despair, sometimes we almost have to grab ourselves and give ourselves a stern talking to in order to listen to God. Psalms, the 43rd chapter, verse number five, the Bible says, why are you cast down? Oh, why, my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Listen to this. A little more persistence, a little more effort, 
and what seemed hopeless failure may turn to glorious success. Notice David and his company of 600 soldiers had been off serving in the military of king, with King Ashon of Gath. That's right, Gath, the enemies of Israel. Gath, the hometown of Goliath. Gath, the wall city. Gath is where a race of giants were from. And in the process had their wives and children of Zillah unprotected. A raiding band of Amalekites, the persistent and longtime enemies of Israel, came down on the village, capturing the women and children for slaves, looting the place, and carried off everything of value, leaving behind nothing but a smoking raft of rubble. They didn't have nothing. Notice the text. It says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Sulak on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Sulak, attacked Sulak, and burned it with fire. Verse 2 And had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. Verse 3, so David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burnt with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Look at this. When David and his men arrived home, all that remained was a heap of of smoking ruins. Everything was gone. Their wives were gone, children gone, cattle gone, and all their property. What do you do when life falls apart? Many follow the proverb, and this is what gets them in trouble. When in trouble, when in doubt, run in a circle and scream and shout. It is interesting to note how David's men reacted when they discovered their terrible loss. Look at verse number four. The Bible says, Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. They cried like a baby. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot of tears. No more power to weep. Some of them sat down and wept until they had no more tears to shed. But others, look at what the others did. They blamed David. Look at verse number six. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved every man for his son and for his daughters. Some went so far, don't be surprised, as to suggest that they stone David. It was always easy in a crisis to blame somebody else or to find a fall guy. But the question is, what does that have to do with encouraging yourself in God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times when your life gets hairy, you're tempted to do what David's army did. You're tempted to take out your frustrations on someone else. As they say, misery loves company. You're in the pit of despair and instead of spending time with God, and asking him what to do, you are so preoccupied in revenge. You're hurting, so you want to hurt someone else. As they say, hurt people, hurt people. 
But despite all this, all this happening around David, he encouraged himself in the Lord. When faced with difficulties of life, ladies and gentlemen, I suggest we pick up our Bibles. Pick up our Bibles, not only pick it up, but read it. In our dark days, we may even felt that even our shadow left us alone. It has been said in a real dark night of the soul. It is always three o'clock in the morning, day after day. However, I'm here to testify the black and white will go away and your eyes will see color again. And we should be thankful that God is around us. We need to be thankful while in the dark. Remember The stars in the atmosphere cannot shine without the dark. However, today, I invite you and your friends for a moment to step out of the dark and open up your Bible. When you open up your Bibles, for example, in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. When you open your Bibles, Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good for them that what? Love God. And to them who are what? Called according to your purpose? No, to his purpose. Open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, verse number 13, where it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Where? In Christ Jesus. When we are discouraged, there comes a point where we have to move our eyes off the problem and choose to focus on and believe God's word. David could have allowed his grief and sorrow to destroy him. But he said, I have God's word. I'm going to believe it, trust it, and I'm going to act on it. Why? My heart shall rejoice in my salvation. But check this out before I close in verse 23 or 24, when they rescued their families and their material items, 200 men were so tired, they did not continue in the rescue. But notice what happens, and this happens in life all the time. When they came back and met the 200 who were faint, dead tired, some of the 400 soldiers did not want to give the 200 anything but their families. They wanted to send them away empty-handed. But what did David say? David would have no part in this kind of thinking. David was too focused on God's goodness to be angry, bitter, and stingy. Notice he said, the Lord hath given us. He had been through a tragic and terrible trial, yet he remained focused on God's goodness. Listen to Acts chapter 13, verse 22. He says, after Removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Why was David a man after God's own heart? Well, he was humble. Psalm 62 and 9. David was reverent, Psalms 18 and 3. David was respectful, Psalms 31 and 9. David was trusting, Psalms 27 and 1. He was devoted, Psalms 
4 and 7. He was faithful, Psalms 23 and 6. He was obedient, Psalms 119 and 34. And then he was repented, Psalms 25 and 11. You see, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? So why should we trust in God? Because God gives us solid reasons to trust him. God's word is true. God does not lie. God never changes who he is. God never changes his mind. God never changes his plans or purposes. God never fail to fulfill his word. God is ruler over all things. God is endlessly wise. God is faithful. God is endlessly loving. God gave his son for us. God is completely just. God, ladies and gentlemen, God has wonderful plans. God is endlessly good. God is my God. God is always good to his children. God will never, never leave us. God cares for you. God cares for me. God will never let you go. God is with you at all times. God is my salvation. David's life was an example for all of us. It was not a perfect life or a life without struggle. In fact, it was a life which experienced many struggles and trials. Yet it was a life in which his heart shone through. The struggles did not cause him to pervert from his path. Let me say that a second time. The struggles that David had to deal with did not pervert him from his path. They led to a straight path of love for the Lord, to peace in the final days and to the fulfillment of his salvation. The promise of eternal life. He lived by Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Ladies and gentlemen, may his life also cause us to put our trust in the Lord. And especially as we face the coming days, may trust in the Lord see us through with comfort, peace, and direction. When led by God, we do not see God's face, but his back. Why is that? Well, we cannot see his face because we cannot see him coming. We see God's back because we see where he has been and what he has done in the past. Why do we anticipate or second guess God? It is only after long reflection that we are finally struck with what God has been doing. He's been doing it all along. Today, I challenge you, ask yourself, do I fear more? Whose power do I respect more? The power of our loving God or the power of a crisis? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Let's keep our distance from each other, as they say, six feet for now. But let's not distance ourselves from God. If you're tired of being distanced from God, do not trash this up as a sweet invite, but I take advantage and take the charge. Take responsibility. 
root out what might be creating the distance you have from God and know that God wants to equip you. One of Satan's greatest weapons that he uses against us is discouragement. We all go through times of discouragement. This is normal if you haven't keep living. But the question becomes, what will you do about it? Are you going to allow it to swallow you up or will you overcome it? That's the question. Thank you for listening to this message. We pray that it has been a blessing to your life. We hope this message has given you the tools to defeat it and overcome it. You are welcome to contact us by email. We are all called by the gospel of Christ. And if your desire is to be baptized for the remission of your sins, please let us know. The Church of Christ doors are always open. If you desire to attend a Church of Christ service in your area, contact us and we will send you to the nearest location. We also ask that you don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with our latest videos. Make sure to subscribe by clicking the button in the right hand corner. It has been a privilege to be here with you today. My prayer today is Lord give me strength in my weakness. Give me faith in my fear and give me power in my powerlessness. Psalms 56 and 3, what time I am afraid. I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Next week, we will continue with part two of David encourage himself in the Lord. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with you and may he bless you and may he bless you real good Rescue, rescue, keep on coming to my rescue.